Chapter 4 1901 After another two years of childhood, spent doing all the things which a young boy should, Alfred is at home again. He is watching his mother cry, sob, snivel and sigh, as if she is insane. God is dead, she shouts out in pain. God remains dead, and we've killed him, Alfred Freeman. We have, we have, we have. Alfred's father has died, so his mother is teary-eyed, with teary pain and teary grief. Alfred is stroking her hair with loving care to offer her relief. Years 1901. An Australian judge is inaugurating his nation's first ever parliament whilst wearing a cape. A German pharmacist is inventing adhesive tape, and an American businessman is inventing disposable razors. In China, an anti-imperialist rebellion is being smashed. In America, a stock market has only just crashed. And in Sweden, the first Nobel Prizes are being judged by appraisers. The West British have been in Southern Africa for another two years, spreading trauma, torture and tears, just up in their khaki blazers. Alfred's father was out there, dressed up in his khaki suits, khaki boots and khaki shorts. He was a tall man who had a brown nose, brown clothes and Alfie's eyes of smoky brown quartz. He was a proud man who had a perfectly straight back, a patriotic tattoo which is perfectly black, and a family with proud military traditions. His great-grandfather arrived at the Opium War by sea. His granddad fought in New Zealand in 1850, and his father fought in several African missions. But Alfred could not remember their days of paternal union before he was capable of communion and before his father left for war. He can only focus on his mother, who starts to trip, spin, stumble and slip across this polished floor. She lands near this dogskin glove which still has a label, this coffee table and that ivory flute, these jars which are full of cooking brandy, colourful candy and colourful fruit. She is thrown here by her uncontrollable backbone, which has a mind of its own and acts as her emotional guide. It reveals her emotions with each whirl, wave and wiggle. Jolt, jerk and jiggle, spin, shimmy and slide. It whirls her to the left when she feels uneasy, waves her to the right when she feels queasy, and wiggles her around when she feels manic. It jolts her forth when she feels cool, jerks her back when she feels cruel, and jiggles her around when she begins to panic. So in her heartbroken condition, her spine bends Alfred's mother into this fetal position as its top curls in towards its base. Vertebrae is vertebrae and try to hide her away out of his cold-hearted place. You must always act like the true child of your father in heaven, she whimpers and simpers whilst tears roll down her face. Look at me. You'll always be by your side, my little soldier. He'll be with you wherever you go, my terrific trooper. He really, really will. There, that is all. Why, mother? Alfred begins to stutter. Oh, you really are a beautiful boy. His mother begins to mutter. But, 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 but please tell me, what's happened to father? In your cheekbones, they're just like the white cliffs of Dover. But, 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 but please tell me, when is father coming home? But, 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 but pretty please, pretty please with a cherry on top. Oh, you'll be a mighty officer, Alfred Freeman, just like him. Somewhere, somewhere, somehow, you shall, you shall, you shall. Was mother? Your father is in heaven, Alfred, and he's looking down on everything you do. Oh, a wonderful warrior. He is, he is, he is. Why, mother, what's happened to him? Please tell me. P please, please, please. Oh, how persistent you are, my fearless fighter. I just don't know what I'm going to do with you and all your mischievity. I don't, I don't, I don't. But I suppose I really should explain. So his mother wipes his tears from her cheeks before she speaks. Shouts, squeals and shrieks. Look at me! To in South Africa, Alfred. Your father had been there since the start of the war. He'd secured victory at the Tall Hill, enlisted child soldiers at the besieged town and had a breakthrough attack in the Dale. My notion, it's such a ghastly thing. It really is a thousand pities. Your father was working in a concentration camp when a Zulu who had abandoned the British army did attack him. Upon my senses, that savage struck your father with a rock, crushed his brave skull, and mushed his poor brain. Look at me, Alfred. This is exactly why we need to fight in those countries. Oh, those brutes aren't civilised like we are. And we, as guardians of civilization, have a duty to tame them. 
Your father was providing a service to mankind. He's dead, but his life wasn't wasted. It will still be a glorious example for us all to follow. And you, my terrific trooper, shall follow in his footsteps. You shall be just like him. Somewhere, some when, somehow. You shall, you shall, you shall. Despite his mother's confidence, Alfred still feels cold. Because at just four years old, he has become a man of his house. So he cries like a fountain, sits still like a mountain, and is silent like a timid grey mouse.